Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig. It is 12 o'clock on a Sunday, which means it's time for a Q&A. This is where I take all the questions that you've asked over the course of the week and I try to answer them to the best of my ability. Um, if you have a question that you want to have answered on the Q&A, please, 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 please make sure that you leave it before um, sort of Wednesday uh, or Wednesday at the very, very latest. I tend to do these uh, and film these on a Wednesday or a Thursday. So if you want to guarantee having your question answered, please leave it on kind of a Tuesday, Wednesday at the absolute latest, and I will get back to it for you. Absolutely not a problem. If I miss your question, I apologise. Sometimes I do miss questions. If I do do that, please ask the question again, and I promise I will get to it. No offence is meant. Uh, there's some great questions today. I've had a very brief flick through, but as you guys know, I tend to just answer these on the fly without doing any type of preparation. So, without further ado, we're going to go straight into a new batch of questions for this weekend. Okay, so the first question is from a regular question and asker, uh, Adrian Suter. How you doing, Adrian? Hope you're well. Thanks for a great Q&A. Thanks for answering so many interesting questions. You're more than welcome. Here's another one. Is there a book on book tests? I would like to learn different principles, not just one particular book test. Um, I don't think there is, to be honest, because mo most book tests, by their very nature are generally sold with a gimmicked book because not all but most book tests have a gimmicked book attached to them you think about the mother of all book tests you think about all about eve you think about like tossed out book tests a lot of them have a gimmicked book that you need to do alongside it now that's not always the case but that is a lot of the time very often the case right so with that in mind there's not really a book that covers book tests there are several impromptu book tests out there. Michael O'Brien has contributed a fantastic impromptu book test for the uh, Netrix, which is great. That's going to be available on launch. And I remember Jay Sankey doing a couple of them. Uh, but other than that, I don't think there is anything. I mean, I could do a video on book tests if you want me to, and I could do like the hows and whys of book tests. Um, takes a while to do those videos, but I could do one in the next two or three months. Absolutely not a problem at all. But I will share with you, for anybody who listens to the Q&A, this is absolute gold dust. Something that I've started doing, and this came about as a result of a session with myself and Lloyd Barnes. Me and Lloyd were doing an online session. We were just jamming ideas back and forth. And, and this is one idea that, uh, that we had, which is brilliant, and I've actually started doing it. And it's a way of doing a very simple book test, but without actually having um, a book, which sounds ridiculous, but it's true. What you need to do is you need to get yourself a book that has the mother of all book tests principle built into it. Now, if you don't know what the mother of all book tests principle is, it's basically... Um, this, on each page, there's a certain amount of big words. And what you do is you tell them to open up the book to any page and you tell them to scan through the pages and have a look at any big word. And, and then you're going to read their mind and tell them what the word is. And then what you do in the mother of all book tests, and each one is slightly different, but the basic principle is there's a certain amount of big words and each one of those big words has a different letter to start the word. So there might be one letter, uh, there might be one word with over six or seven letters starting with A, there might be another one starting with B, and so on and so forth. And by knowing the first letter of the word, you immediately know what the word is, right? Okay, and, and there's a lot more to it than that, but there's a very brief overview for people that don't know what the all about, uh, uh, sorry, people that don't know what the mother of all book tests is about, right? Now, this is a way of doing a book test impromptu anytime, anywhere. So what you're going to do is you're going to grab a book with the mother of all book tests built into it. So for example, I use All About Eve by uh, Steve Dell, which is a fantastic book test, by the way. You can get it from uh, Alakazam Magic. And amongst other things, that principle is built into it. And what you're going to do is you're going to create an album on your phone, in your phone gallery, of book reviews. And you're going to call it book review videos or something like that. And what you're going to do is you're going to get somebody filming you as you take the book that you're using, in my case, All About Eve, and you're slowly, over a 15-second video, going to leaf through the pages of the book. So you're, going to, you're just going to flick through the pages of the book, right? Um, so you end up flick, 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 flicking through the book. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to drop that video into that album. So you've got an album, you've got a video in there, and, and that's basically it. Now, what you're going to do then is 
whatever the words are, because remember, with the mother of all book test principle, there's a certain amount of words and each word has a letter at the beginning. And if you know that first letter, you know what the word is, right? So what you're going to do now is on the lock screen of your phone, you're going to put a crib and you can actually build it into a uh, you can build it into an image. So I've had an image designed for me for the home screen of my phone and all of the words for the all about Eve book test are actually printed on that wallpaper. It just it doesn't look like it's a crib, but it is. But if anybody just switched on my phone and looked at the wallpaper, they wouldn't see anything suspicious. But that crib gives me all the information. So there's no memory work. So now the principle is that you say to somebody, hey, I, uh, you know, I've, I've been thinking about putting this YouTube channel together and it's going to be all about book reviews and I'm actually going to start the videos by flicking through a book and then reviewing them and talking about what I think. Um, I've only just started coming up with the information. I've got one book so far. Uh, this is called All About Eve. It's a fantastic book. And if they look at the album, they'll see the All About Eve cover and you say, look, I'm going to look away. What I want you to do is play the video and pause it somewhere, anywhere you want to, just pause it as I'm flicking through the book so you can see a page. And they'll do that while you're looking away. And you go, fantastic. Now what I want you to do is zoom in and where you've where you've paused that image. And I want you to look at one of the words, but make it a nice big word, maybe over uh, six or seven letters. Okay, can you do that for me? Or over five or six letters. Can you do that? Brilliant. Now what I want you to do is switch my phone off. Have you done that? Brilliant, can I take my phone back? Now you're holding your phone here, and now you've effectively forced, you've done the, all, the mother of all book tests without needing a book, which is incredible. Um, so now you can say to them, hey, concentrate on the first letter, and I'm not gonna go into method behind the mother of all book tests. There's lots of different ways of doing this, but you get the, the identity of the first letter, and I highly advise you to look into different, varying different ways of doing that. There's lots of different principles and lots of different books, but you get the first letter. Once you have the first letter, you're holding your phone anyway. All I have to do is tap the screen. And as I do, I can just immediately look and I can see exactly the word they're thinking of. So now I've got this book test that's just basically, I can do it anytime, anywhere. Now, if you want to get really clever about this, and this is another thing that myself and Lloyd have been jamming with, if you want to get really clever about this, you can have a whole bunch of different books in the album. And, uh, and you can say, yeah, I've started this YouTube channel. I've got a whole bunch of different books in there. As you can see, I've probably got seven or eight. I've got nine or 10 different books in there. We're going to pick one of these at random. And, and they pick one at random and then you flick it through, you flick through, and when you flick through, it's basically the same thing. Uh, and there's lots of different ways of doing that. Lots and lots and lots of different ways of doing that. I'm not gonna, uh, I'm not, I'm not gonna tip how you do that right now. I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna tip the method that myself and Lloyd are using. One way you could do it is you could do digital force bags, for example. So you could have a whole bunch of different books in your album of books that you're using for your book review channel, right? And one of them is all about Eve in my example, and the other ones are all random books. But you, when you, you film it so that the thumbnail of the image in the album is the cover of the book, so they can see immediately by looking through the album the cover of the book. Then you can have all of those books put into a digital force bag list, uh, and you could, you could list all of those books in a digital force bag list. So then what you do, is you say, okay, I've got all of these different book reviews. There's about 10 or 15 in there. Uh, and I actually am keeping track of them in my notes page as to which books I've done for when I start my channel. We're going to try and do something. Give me a number from 1 to 15. Can you go into my notes page? Can you... Um can you look up the book? Brilliant. Swipe up so I can't see. Very good. Now this is the album. This has got my. Uh, uh, this has got all of the videos I've done so far for the intros. Can you can you find your book that you uh, you were thinking of? You can. Brilliant. And then you go into it. So that's probably not answered your question, but I wanted to share that with you. It's a really cool way of doing a book test, completely impromptu. As long as you're on your phone, you can do it anytime, anywhere. And as I say, I use All About Eve, uh, which you can get from Alakazam. But all good book tests will work. Okay, so the next question is by Lee Mill, magician. Hope you're well, Lee. And Lee says, cannot wait for Netflix. Me too. You won a free month. Awesome. My question for this week is, can you do a 5x5 five five on Peter Duffy? I'm only just discovering his work and loving it. Well, Peter Duffy is the man as far as I'm concerned. He's an amazing magician. And I haven't done a 5x5 five five on him, but there's no reason why I couldn't do. I could probably put a 5x5 five five together on Peter Duffy like that because I know a lot of his material. So thank you for the inspiration, uh, Lee. I will do a 5x5 five five on Peter Duffy. And you are right, the guy is a legend. 
Okay, so the next question is from Jay Lebowitz, and Jay says, I saw the trailer for The Coffee Cup and Beans by Volpine. You're correct, it is both groundbreaking and amazing. I saw that Ryland is one of the instructors, just seeing him there and only knowing him from the channel, I was incredibly proud of him. I cannot imagine how this makes you feel as a father. Amazing. I'd buy a set if I had any facility with the cups and balls. I have a set of regular cups and balls that I need to start learning before I try something more advanced. And no, if I had any delusions that Ryland being there means a simplified routine, he had already mastered the cups and balls by seven and is now nine. Don't know if I could keep up with him. So for those of you that don't know, and I'm going to be talking about this more on the channel over the coming weeks and months as it becomes released. Um, Adam Wilbur and uh, Felix, his business partner from Volpine Creations, ha are releasing very, very soon something called the Coffee Cups and Beans. And if you've seen it, you'll know it is probably, no, not probably, it is definitely the ultimate cups and balls set. It really is. And there's so much stuff going for it. And I have a feeling that this is going to change the game. I would not want to be somebody releasing a cups and balls set anymore after this has come out, because this is a game changer as far as I'm concerned with everything that you can do with it, both in terms of instruction, tutorial, but also in terms of the quality of the props. They look like cups and ball. They look like coffee cups. The beans look absolutely amazing. Uh, they, they are almost indestructible. And the system that Adam's got to actually load coffee beans into them to do an explosion is just simply genius. But one thing that Adam's done is he's asked uh, magicians from all over the world, um, you know, that are well known for using the cups and balls to contribute and explain their personal routines. And he's got so many people doing this. This is great. I mean, Tom Wright, for example, who's one of the ultimate workers over here in the UK and just an all round nice guy. He's contributed his routine, as has a lot of other people. So one person is Ryland and... Um, Adam and Felix really wanted Ryland part of the uh, part of the project, which Ryland is just over the moon with, as you can imagine. You know, he's so excited that at the age of nine, he's been asked to contribute a routine to a project the scale of this. And I said to him, I said, right, the only way that I'm going to allow you to be a part of this is if you put something together that genuinely stands up there with every other routine. We can't just have you going on there doing nothing. So I gave him the cups and balls. He's already got his own routine, but I said it has to be, you know, kind of adapted because there's certain unique properties with these cups. I locked him in a room for about four days. Um, <laughs> not literally, but I locked him in a room with cups for about four days. And he came out with a killer, a killer routine that I would person. Well, I showed this routine to Lloyd Barnes and uh, when, it, when he filmed it and Lloyd was like, that's the routine that I would want to learn off the project. That's incredible. He wrote the presentation, he wrote it himself. He put the whole structure of the routine together himself. And there's phases and concepts in there that I have never seen before with the cups and balls. And I think it's because Ryland was coming into it from a fresh plate and he wasn't getting influenced by lots of other routines. And he was just there kind of putting stuff together and he put this routine together, which has got some very interesting concepts. And it's a, it's a two cup routine and it doesn't use any of the coffee bean explosions. So it's really, really practical. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, I'm really glad you mentioned that. I didn't know the trailer was live. Um, you are right, I am super proud of Ryland. I mean, who wouldn't be? I mean, he's nine years old. And he's been asked by one of the biggest production companies in the world to be a part of a project that is probably going to be the definitive guide to this type of prop. And his name is going to be attached to it forever. So, yeah, I'm super excited and I cannot wait for people to see his routine. OK, we've got one more question from Jay Lebowitz and Jay says, I've been looking for a good place to learn a key to box routine. So I wondered if you have a good single resource as if you have these routines on Netflix. Thanks. So, um... I did a video on, on YouTube and it's called The Hows and Whys of Coin Box Magic. You might want to check that out because I went through uh, Akita boxes, Boston boxes, uh, German boxes. I went through so many different types of boxes and I explained the differences between all of them. Um, outside of that, there are some uh, routines on the Netrix. There will be more added over the coming weeks and months, but there are, I think, two or three coin box routines. Excuse me. Um with more to be added. I have talked to the guys in the office about doing sections on there where I do a deep dive into a particular product or a particular prop, 
but you know, I, I kind of go through all of the different moves that I know with that prop, which I can't do on YouTube because I don't like expose stuff. When I do a hows and whys video, it's not about exposing moves, it's about talking about the different props and so on and so forth. But on metrics, I can talk about all the different moves with a particular prop. So that's something that I'm probably gonna do that I've really considered doing. Um, yeah, outside of that, I've got a new project coming out in June with Alakazam. And my, uh, in my opinion, what is the best coin routine, the coin box routine that I've ever created is included on that project. I love that routine. Uh, it is so strong and I'm so proud of it, but that's going to be on the project as well. So that's, that coin box routine is on there. Um, Doug Brewer, you want to check out Doug Brewer. He's got some really good work on the Aikido coin box as well, like some really good work. And if you haven't watched my tra uh, my interview with Justin Milley yet, the third interview that went up about a week ago, it was a Talk Magic interview. One of the things that Justin talked about was a new Aikido box that he's got coming out, which is made out of wood, and it is ridiculously good. Like I'm talking ridiculously good. And he was sharing some moves with that that was just blowing my mind. I was getting fooled over and over again watching him do his coin box work. And I know that that coin box is something that uh, Justin is bringing out in the next two to three months. Uh, if you want to see his coin box routine, he performed the whole thing. Uh, you can see it on the interview I did with Justin Miller. So there's a few good places to start. And obviously, I'll mention one other David Roth. If you've got David Roth's Expert Coin Magic, the book, there's a huge section there on Aikido coin boxes. And to be honest, it was it was David who really laid the groundwork for a lot of the modern coin box magic because he kind of basically took a coin box and said, okay, well, if we remove the turnover move that everybody does, what else can we do with this box? And then went through a whole bunch of different routines like the spill out steel and a whole bunch of different stuff that you can do with boxes that's not a turnover box. And the other person that did that as well, by the way, is Mark Leverage. Mark Leverage has put some really cool routines out over the years with coin boxes. Uh, and he's kind of changed the game and come up with a lot of unique concepts as well. Uh, and you can check out a lot of his stuff on his LNL DVD set, which is also available as a download from all good magic dealers. So there you go. Hopefully that gives you some sources where you can start learning in coin box magic. Okay, so the next question is from Sting, and Sting says, Hey Craig, interesting video, thank you very much. My first question as you answer the mental routines without sleight of hand in regards to the video best close-up openers would you be open to doing a top 10 openers for your mentalism show i think that's a really good idea man i think that's a really good idea the top 10 best openers for your mentalism show 100 percent, i would do that in fact i think it's a killer idea i think i could put it together fairly easily so yeah look out for that on the channel in the next two to three weeks but i will definitely do the top 10 best openers for your mentalism show Okay, so the next question is from Alex Fick, uh, Kilpatrick, and it's less of a question and more of a statement. Regarding mistakes, the number one general rule for the presenters, the audience will typically dismiss mistakes as easily as you do. It's not as easy as it sounds, but it is that simple. If you can act as though something unexpected is actually expected, planned, a joke, a bit, or just not that big a deal, that's exactly what it will be to the audience. And that's very true, Alex. That's really good. In fact, one of my mentors is a guy called Brad Burton. He's the UK's number one motivational um, speaker. And he has this great piece of advice um, that when you're on stage, you should have somewhere towards the wings a glass of water or a drink of some description because if you lose your way or you lose your train of thought which can happen rather than going um uh, uh and trying to get back on track which looks kind of really bad you can just walk over to the wings grab a drink put it down come back to the center of the stage and carry on presenting or talking or doing whatever it is that you're doing and that few seconds that you take to walk over and grab a drink and come back looks absolutely natural absolutely motivated but it gives you this some time to internally think what the hell am i talking about uh but which is kind of similar to what you're saying and i completely agree with you 100 percent okay so next question is from raza magic who hasn't uh, who hasn't commented on the channel for a while and typically as you would imagine from raza is put about 100 different uh um comments on uh, on one video and they all basically revolve around the same sort of thing so i'll read two of them out and then i'll address it uh, he said, fingers crossed for a badass trilogy interview on Craig Petty. And then another one, I get the impression that in your heart, you don't feel ready to give an interview for Magic TV. Here's the thing. I, 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 
this channel is not about me. It is about me. It's Craig Petty's Magic TV. But this channel, when it comes to interviews, is about other people. That's what it's about. It's not about me. It's about other people. It's about interviewing other people. Um, I, I do get from time to time, especially from you, Raza, when are you going to get interviewed? When are you going to get interviewed? When are you get interviewed? The answer is sometime down the line, maybe in a year, maybe in two years, maybe never. I'm not, I'm, it's not, again, it's not about me. It's about the people that I'm interviewing. That's what's important here. People who watch the channel regularly can find out a lot about me because I'm an open book when it comes to talking about the stuff I've done and the mistakes I've made and the stuff that I haven't done. I'm a very much an open book on a week by week basis. So you can see a lot of the stuff that I get up to now and I reference a lot of the stuff that I've done in the past. And I've done lots of other interviews where I've had various different people interview me for various different platforms where I've talked about my life and uh, growing up in magic and so on and so forth. So the Deceive Reality podcast, I've been on there. I've done two podcasts on the Magician's Advice podcast. I've had Brendan Rodriguez interview me. Um, I've had a whole bunch of people interview me. I've just had Adam Wilbur interview me for his channel. Like, it's happened. It's not like I'm not out there talking about me. <laughs> you know, I'm promoting Magic TV. That happens all the time. So in terms of me doing an interview on myself, will it happen? Maybe one day. Am I in any rush for that to happen? No, because I've got content planned out for this channel, probably for the next 12 to 18 months. Um, so I don't really need, feel the need to interview myself. And also I think that the people that watch Magic TV are more interested in watching interviews with other people than they are me because they hear me talking about myself all of the time. Okay, so the next question is from The Fess. Uh, hey Craig, been a while since I asked something on the channel. I know, how you doing? I hope you're well, man. But the two things I want to ask is, one, are you, uh, right, let's take them one at a time. So number one, are you open to the possibility of doing a live stream, say once a month to replace a QA? and a I feel a lot of your audience would really be down with it. I know you're quite a busy person, but I want to know your thoughts on the idea. And uh, a few people have said, yeah, I was thinking of asking that. That would be a great idea, blah, 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 blah. I do get that quite a lot. Will you do a live stream? Will you do a live stream? It's not something that I've ever considered doing. And I'll tell you for why, and then maybe we can work out a way around it. The reason is, I'm all about consistency. What I want the people to watch Magic TV, what I want you guys to, to do is believe that I'm going to do what I say that I'm going to do. That's very, very important to me. Uh, and it's why I've become so protective about that with people like Luke Dancy, when he effectively called me a liar. Because the most important thing to me is that I deliver what I say that I'm going to do. So if I say I'm going to do a five by five on a Monday, even if I haven't put one together and it's Sunday night, I'm going to stay up late to do a five by five from the Monday. I'm not going to let you guys down. If I say I'm going to do a and a on a Sunday, I'm going to do it. So that when I went, I had a really busy period where I went to Blackpool and then from Blackpool, I went to uh, Columbus to film with Penguin. And that was a whole like probably 10 or 11 day period there where I knew I wasn't going to film any videos. So I busted my ass to make sure that every single video while I was away was scheduled. And that was really important to me. So would I, and that's why I've never thought about doing a live stream because I'm very busy at various different points of the day and it changes on a week to week basis. So on a Wednesday, for example, if I said, right, I'm going to do a live stream on a Wednesday night. Well, not every Wednesday night would I be free. So now I've got this weekly thing and I'm letting people down because I'm not doing it weekly. Um, and it's like I say, I can't tell you how important it is to be a man of my word. And I think it's very important. It's why I've spent so long uh, building up Netrix. It's why Netrix has took so long to be released. It's because I've wanted to put it into a position where I can deliver everything that I've said that I'm going to, to the people that potentially want to buy into it. So, I mean, there's that, you know, that's, that's the thing. Um, but, you know, as a one-off, maybe once a month or maybe once a fortnight, that might be a possibility. If you guys are down with that, uh, that might be a possibility. I'd need to work about work out about how it happens, uh, how it happens. Uh, I do go on Lloyd's channel fairly regularly. He does a live stream on Friday night, on Sunday nights at five o'clock and I jump on there when I can. I can't do it every week, but when I can, I, I, I do jump on there. But... Um, uh, what I'm trying to think what day of the week would be best. Yes, yes, I am more than open to do it. It couldn't be weekly 
But maybe if we did like fortnightly or monthly or something like that, or fortnightly might be possible, and we picked a, a date that I think I can pretty much guarantee to, uh, to run this thing on, then maybe it would work. I mean, let me know in the comments. I'm only going to do this if a ton of people want me to do it. So let me know in the comments down below. Would you like to see a live stream? What day would be best? I think the weekends are out, to be honest, because I'm not always available on the weekends. I'm thinking like maybe a Thursday might be a good day, a Thursday sort of maybe at about 10 o'clock or something like that, because if it's Thursday at 10 o'clock my time, that means over in the States, it's like two or three o'clock. I don't know. Let me know. Let me know what you want. And, uh, and, and yeah, I'll make it happen. I'm more than happy to do live streams. I just need to make sure it's something that I can commit to, uh, if that makes sense. Okay, so the next question off the fest is... What are your thoughts on magic combined with puzzles? I've been thinking of getting minted as I love small props that are puzzles as well as magic, including things like spring. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that it's a good idea uh, as long as it's, uh, it's entertaining and it's magical. What I don't think you'd want to do, I remember going to a restaurant many, many years ago. I was in Tenerife on holiday with a friend. This is like going way back, man. This is like going about 20 years back. And uh, we went to a restaurant because a magician, a walk around magician was advertised. And we were like, oh, that's cool. So we went to this restaurant where this magician was. And he, he was basically just walking around giving people puzzles. Saying, hey, uh, I'm the magician here. Here's a puzzle. Try to figure that out. And just giving us a puzzle and, and going, no, nope, no, nope, can't figure it out. And he was coming back like five minutes later and going, look, this is how it's done. Oh, right. Here's another puzzle. Try and figure that out. And there was hardly any magic being done. It was all just puzzles that was being given out to people, which, you know, obviously worked for him. But for me, I was bored senseless. But if you can combine puzzles with magic, um, that's great. And I don't see many routines where they effectively do combine puzzles with magic. And you look at, uh, you know, you mentioned Minted. And I think that, you know, Minted is a good example. But I don't know if it's actually a puzzle, really. Uh, I suppose it could be because you're kind of saying, how did the needle go through the, the mints when it was a solid block, which I suppose, but that's not mad. That's not a puzzle. That's, you know, it's kind of like a reaction to seeing a really cool magic trick. It's like, how did the card come to the top of the deck? How did the coins jump from one place to another? How did the coins go through the table or whatever it may be? It's the same sort of thing when you think about it. How it's, it's not. A puzzle really it's kind of like look here's this needle it goes through the mints as you would imagine how does it go through the mints when it's a solid block inside it's not really a puzzle it's really you know it's really just a magic trick that's been framed as a puzzle I don't know I, I've not seen many tricks where it's a puzzle that's also a magic trick where I, I'd like that I mean let me know let me know what I think that they work because puzzles are naturally intriguing to people, but at the same time, magic is in entertaining and enjoyable. Give me a few examples of routines that you think combine magic with puzzles, because I'd love to know. I'd, lo I'd love to look into them, because I really can't think of that many right now. Okay, so the next question is from Warren Treadway. How you doing, buddy? Uh, hey, Craig, great show as always. With regards to your latest Keymaster release with Penguin Magic, can you tell me what size the keys are used, i.e. are they the same size as used with Keymaster Chrome or are they the same size as used with the original Keymaster? Um, they are a totally different design to either of those. Like I've said to you before, on this channel, I had nothing to do with Keymaster Chrome, like absolutely zero to do with it. Uh, the only time that I found out about it is when I had to go and buy it myself to see what it was. Um, so I had nothing to do with Keymaster Chrome. It wasn't... Uh, discussed with me, nothing, no no communication about Keymaster Chrome at all. Um, the keys that are supplied are very different to the keys that you get in Keymaster Chrome, also very different to the keys that you got with the original Keymaster. Um, they'd be, be designed to my specifications. They are smaller than uh, the original Keymaster keys and they're, they're real keys. The, the thing with uh, the original Keymaster uh, and I don't know about Keymaster Chrome because obviously I had nothing to do with it. But with the original Keymaster, there were real keys, but they had kind of had a 
these aren't real keys look to them. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Which was incredibly frustrating as the creator of the project. Uh, but with these, you know, we've gone back and forth with various different prototypes. I have what I think the best keys. And because of the new routines and the new ideas, they had to be a certain way in order to incorporate the new gimmick. And uh, I, the other thing I wanted to do is I wanted to make the holes slightly smaller as well. Uh, for various different reasons that I discuss on the project, so that's also been incorporated into there. Uh, I had friends who really struggled to do the original Keymaster because the stem was so long, um, and so they found it difficult to palm. I have very big hands, that's not an issue for me, but uh, a, a few people did have a problem with it. So uh, they've been shortened slightly while still being absolutely real keys so that uh, they're easier to palm. Like I've tested it on somebody I know with very little hands, Ryland, and he can do it absolutely not a problem. So um, it, it, they're the perfect size keys, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, hope that helps. Okay, so the next question is from Sean McNulty, Magician, and Sean says, question, next month I'll be auditioning to be a member of my local magic club. Any advice or tips? Yeah, man, uh, don't uh, try and do something that you've never done before. Don't try and be clever to prove how good a magician you are. Just go out and do the stuff that you know works. So I've got a friend who will remain nameless because I don't want to uh, uh, say who he is, but I've got a friend um, who auditioned for a, for a very important magic club, uh, the Magic Circle, and went and did his audition and didn't do a very good job. And this is a magician who is incredible, like in my opinion, one of the top magicians in the UK, and he didn't do a very good job at all. Um, everything went wrong. And one of the reasons why everything went wrong is because he was doing routines that he'd never done before. He put together an entire act specifically just to uh, audition. And I, I remember saying to him beforehand, I was like, dude, why don't you just do the stuff that you do in the real world? Because you know what, what, what to do if things go wrong. You can do it inside out and back to front. It's really strong magic and it's all they need to see. And he's like, no, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. And it just kind of basically blew up in his face. Um, so I'm going to give you the same advice that I gave him. If you're doing an audition, you don't have to prove you're the greatest magician of all time. Performing in front of magicians is stressful. It really is. Because you know that they're sitting there judging you. And even if they're not judging you, they can't help themselves in their head. They're kind of judging you in a way. And so it can be a very stressful situation. So the best piece of advice I can give you is to just do the stuff that you've done, as Greg Wilson would call, your thousand timers. Because then, if something goes wrong, you know what to deal, you know what to do to get out of it. And also you've got all the lines, you've got all the bits of business, you've got everything in place. Um, and you're not going to be in a situation where you mess anything up. So the big piece of advice I can give you is don't try to be too clever. Do the stuff that you know works and, uh, and just have fun with it and just enjoy it. And don't let the fact that you're performing for magicians put you off. Because at the end of the day, you know this stuff as good as, if not better than them. And it's you that's performing, okay? And you need to remember that. So, but most importantly, just do the stuff that you're really comfortable with and don't try and put something new together just to impress people because more often than not, it will backfire and blow up in your face. Okay, so the next question is from Steed9. And Steed says, hey, Craig, do you know of any book or DVD that teaches various tricks using gaff cards, double faces, double backers, etc.? Thanks. Um, the answer is uh, not really. Um, I know that, uh, um, what's his name? Dan Harlan did a uh, project on the red, blue, double backer a little while ago called a little bit of our b, b or something like that. It's a Penguin product. If you put in Dan Harlan into Penguin, it'll come up. Um, so there's that. Uh, I put a DVD out many, many years ago called Blank, which was routines with blank cards. Um, outside of that, I've not really seen anything. However, I am um, currently working with a production company to bring out just that. So, you know, like I brought out a, a visible project and then, I'm, you know, the, the sequel's coming out to that and it was all on the invisible deck and so on and so forth. I'm, I'm working on projects with double backers double faces and double blank cards. And I think that that's something that the industry needs. I think there's a lot of stuff out there that you can do with it and there's no reference point. So that's something that I am actively working on. So uh, I'll update you on that in the coming weeks and months. But outside of that, there's really nothing else out there. There's not really, I mean, there's the odd trick here and there, but it's not really a collection of tricks. So hopefully we can change that in the coming weeks and months. 
Okay, so the next question is from Tom Stevenson, and Tom says, Hey, Craig, what are your thoughts on the How to Control Minds kit by Pete Turner? Have you bought it, and if so, will you be doing a review? I have. I was one of the Kickstarters. I actually paid for it on Kickstarter, and I haven't received it yet. So if anybody is watching this that works for Illusionist, where's my How to Read Minds? I've emailed them a couple of times, and I haven't seen it yet. I don't know where it is. It hasn't been delivered to me. I don't know if I sent an email that they didn't get or there's a miscommunication. But yes, I would love to do a review of it because I know it's going to be good because it's Pete's. And uh, it's Pete's thing and I love Pete Turner. But I haven't received it. I haven't got it. Uh, I ordered it on Kickstarter literally months and years ago or uh, whatever it is and I haven't received it yet. So if anybody knows anybody at Illusionist, send me my How to Read Minds or my How to Control Minds kit because I want it, I want it, I want it here, I want it now because I want to review it. Um, I don't know, I, I haven't received it and I have paid for it. So hopefully illusionists are looking into this. Okay, so the next question is from Anthony uh, DeLongpre. And Anthony says, question, why is the magic community so toxic? Does it say something about the type of people that are drawn to magic? Of course, it isn't everybody, but it's more than the slim minority. Um, yeah, I mean, <sighs> If you'd asked me this question a few years ago, you would have got a very different answer to what, you, uh, what you're gonna get now. Um, but I do think that there's a certain aspect of toxicity to the magic community if you look in the right place. But there's also an overwhelming positive aspect to the magic community. I went to Blackpool for three or four days and it was heartwarming to see people just standing around jamming, showing each other magic tricks, people being brought together through their love of magic. I went to the Magic Circle and lectured a couple of weeks ago. And when I was in the club room, everybody was just getting on. There was no uh, clicks at all. There was no like little groups of people that you weren't allowed into, which I've seen in the past at the Magic Circle. That didn't happen. That didn't exist. So I think, but, but if you'd asked me a few years ago when I was out of the Magic community, I would have said the Magic community sucks. I hate the magic community. Everybody about the magic community sucks. And maybe it was my negativity towards the magic community that was making me see all the toxicity. I don't know. Since I've kind of tried to be more of a positive guy, I'm seeing so many positive aspects of the magic community. Now, don't get me wrong. There is a certain amount of toxicity, like I say. But I think that that's the minority. You said it's more than the slim minority. I don't think it is. I think it's I think it is a minority. Um, I experienced the wrath of the magic community um, a couple of times. Um, I, I, the first time was when I was leaving the community and people were coming down on me about Red and, and, and the Magic Circle and this team building. There was so much stuff that uh, people were coming down on me on and, and various different websites were posting videos that weren't very nice, like the, uh, what's that one? Ronald, I think his name is, the... Uh, he didn't do it anymore. Weekly Magic Fail. He put some re doozies on there. Jersey Magic Reviews was another guy that slagged me off. Um, and I think part of the reason was that was happening was because back in the day, I was the guy that was going on the, the uh, Wizard Pro Review and I was ranting all the time about this and that and the other. Um, so when I did something that was wrong, and to be clear, the whole red situation was my fault. When I did something that was wrong, it was an open door for people to come down on me like a ton of books and like a ton of books, ton of bricks. And fair enough, you know, um, and that was that was horrible. But, you know, it, it, it was in some ways deserved. Um, and then more recently, you know, I, I, with the quantum deck, I've had a lot of people uh, come down on me with the quantum deck. Overwhelmingly positive reactions. Most 90, 99% of people so positive about the quantum deck. And I've seen so many people message me going, oh my gosh, this has gone straight into my act. This is absolutely trick of the year 2022. And then you've had some people um, use it as an excuse to really kind of rip me a new asshole. Um, and you know what? There's people out there. You know, I keep hearing this thing. Craig Petty is Marmite. Craig Petty is Marmite. You either love him or hate him. I hate Craig. I hate Craig. I don't know what. I've got myself to a point in the magic community where I just don't care anymore. You know, for those people that hate me, for those people that go, oh, Craig Petty's Marmite, fair enough. I couldn't be doing any more than what I'm doing to try and show people that I'm not a person to be hated. I couldn't be doing any more than I'm doing. I am literally dedicating my entire life to producing videos to try and help the magic community. 
That is what I'm doing. I've put my business, I don't want to say I've put it on hold because I haven't, because there's other people running it for me, but I've stepped away from my business to try and promote um, positivity within the magic community and try and provide content that I think might help people that's more than just tutorials for tricks because I think there's enough of those. And, um, you know, if, if people still hate me, even though I'm doing all of this, then that's fine. I can't, you can't like everybody. You can't like everybody. Um, and you can't get upset every time there's somebody out there that doesn't like you or doesn't like your mission or whatever. You just got to focus on what you're doing and you got to believe in what you're doing. So in terms of why is the magic community toxic? I don't know. There's certain people out there that are. I remember seeing an interview many, many years ago. Like this is back when I was probably 18, 19. Many, many years ago, I remember seeing an interview with Max Maven. And uh, he said that the type of people that are drawn into magic are people that are kind of insecure. Um, because, you know, they're the sort of people that maybe were bullied at school. They're the type of people that were maybe outcasts at school. And the fact that they can do something that nobody else can do, that's this special thing that they can show people magic and no one knows how it's done. It, it gives them a feeling of self-worth or something like that. I don't know if that's the case. I don't know if Max is on the money with that because I know a lot of people that were like jocks in school and they're, they're now magicians. So I don't know if that's the case or not. But what I do know is that there are certain people in the magic community that are just not very nice. But there's also the vast majority of the magic community that are just awesome. And I know this from running this channel. Do I get hate messages on this? Yes. Do I get people slagging me off? Yes. Do I get people slagging off the way that I look? Yes. Do I get people slagging off the way that I dress? Yes. Do I get people slagging off uh, my magic? Yes. Do I get people slagging off my family? Yes. But I've learned to live with that. I've learned to push that to one side because for every person that leaves a negative comment, there's about 10 or 15 or 20 people that leave a positive comment and go, oh my gosh, you, you're amazing. You know, this, this channel has really helped me and so on and so forth. So as long as I can see I'm doing a good job and as long as I can see I'm having a positive impact on people, then just the negativity, just let it wash over you like wash off a duck's back. Because the bottom line is, what does it say about the type of people that leave negative comments on, 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 on videos or channels? What does it say about them? You know, they, they, normally it's a fake account that was created like two or three weeks ago on YouTube because they don't want to know who you really are. And they go on YouTube and they go, oh, I, I, I think that this is terrible, blah, 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 blah. Hey, if you want to waste your time setting up a, an account on YouTube and you want to waste your time making horrible comments and the only reason I can see that you would make those comments is to make somebody feel bad then I feel sorry for you I pity you I'm, I'm beyond ranting about this sort of stuff I'm beyond sitting here going let me tell you some I'm beyond that I've got more important things to do I've got more important things to do it's like when I talked about the whole thing with Ryland the Blackpool you know and I was on the beat the one competition and people were texting in slagging off a nine-year-old kid yeah, at the time I was angry, but you didn't see a rant video about that. Why did you not see a rant video about that? Because I actually sat there and I was like, this is pathetic. <laughs> this is pathetic. The, this kid has done more at the age of nine than anybody who's slagging me off, him off would do at any point in their life. At nine years old, he's been invited to contribute to one of the biggest magic products that's coming out in 2022. And he's performed twice on the gala show at Blackpool. Oh, and on top of that, just so you guys know, he's been booked for four other Magic Convention gala shows this year that I haven't mentioned and I haven't told anyone about. But over the course of this year, he's on at least four other gala shows at the age of nine. So the people that sit there slagging off Ryland, what does that say about them? What does that say about the type of person they are, that they feel the need to slag a nine-year-old off in public that's doing more than they have ever achieved? And also at school, and also doing all the other stuff he does. Yeah, I could get mad at it, or I could choose to just look at those people and think about how pathetic they are, because they will never achieve what he's managed to achieve at the age of nine. By the time that they 
curl over and die. Let's assume that they leave, live to a light, ripe old age. They're not going to be able to achieve what Ryland's achieved at the age of nine. So, hey, slag him off all you want to. Slag me off all you want to. If it makes you feel better, if it gives you your jollies, fair enough. I hope it gives you warm and fuzzies inside. But know that I think that you're completely pathetic. And, and it's the same with anybody. It's the same with anything. Yeah, there's toxicity in magic. There's toxicity in every community. When you have groups of people together, there's always going to be a toxic element. It's just human nature. All we can do is just believe in whatever mission we're on, whatever path we're on, we can believe in that. And we just have to go full force, 100%, and let everything else drown out like white noise. So why do I think that there's, um, let me read the question again. <laughs> why do I think the magic community is toxic? I think that there's certain people out there that are toxic, just like there are in any community. But I think that the best thing to do is look past them, ignore them, and just get on with you. Just get on with you and don't worry about what anybody else thinks. Okay, so the next question is uh, Benoit P. And Benoit says, do you have any suggestions for dry hands in order to keep uh, your hands uh, moist for card and coin slides? I have dry fingers, which limit some of the slides I can do. I'm using hand lotion, but needs to refresh several times during a walk around performance. Um, you know what? All I would say is use O'Keefe's. Uh, you can get it from Prop Dog in the UK, but it's available from worldwide. Uh, my friend Nemid Phoenix swears by O'Keefe's hand cream. He has very dry hands and that allows him to do all the incredible sleights of hand he does. Um, so use O'Keefe's. That is what you want to do. Use O'Keefe's working hand cream. A few people have replied to your comments and said the same thing. That is the best piece of advice I can give you. O'Keefe's working hand cream is perfect. Okay, so the next question is from Shea Blades, and Shea says, okay, didn't get answered before, so I'll ask again. I'm very sorry. Any advice on how to sign into the Magic Cafe? Tried all three of my email addresses, two Yahoo, one Gmail, and get a message of, sorry, email host is blocked. Uh, what the hell is this? Then I go on to read, they don't accept free email addresses. Didn't know there were paid ones, and why are these accepted? I'm confused. Any advice appreciated? Um... Okay, so I don't really know the Magic Cafe well enough to answer this question, but I do know that the Magic Cafe only allow you to sign up if you're using a paid email account. So any free email accounts, they, they won't accept. You could have a paid email account. So for example, um, info at magictv.org, you know, whatever it may be. Info at slightlyunusual.co.uk, Craig at magictv.org. Any of those would work. Um, it won't work with a free email account. Now, I remember reading somewhere it's because the decision was made to do this because they were getting a lot of trolls signing up on free email accounts, just creating email accounts to cause trouble. And so they stopped any email accounts that are free being able to sign up because then at least they can track you back if you or something. I don't know. I don't know if that's the case or not. Um, but realistically, I think it's an insane decision that you have a discussion forum and the only way to sign up to a discussion forum is by having a, uh, a, a, you know, like a paid for email address because not everyone has a paid for email address like you, Shay. You don't have a paid for email address. There's lots of other people that don't have a paid for email address. So what are you meant to do in that situation? Well, there's two ways that you can deal with it. Number one is... Don't forget, I believe you can still read The Magic Cafe. Yes, you can. You can still read The Magic Cafe if you um, don't comment. And frankly, The Magic Cafe is a bit of a toxic place. You know, we talked about there's not no toxicity in, the, in magic. That's because most of it is centered around The Magic Cafe. And um, it's a great resource for researching. Uh, and I use it an awful lot to research, but you don't need to sign up in order to read the posts. You need to sign up in order to comment, right? So if you're just reading posts, it's totally not an issue at all. You don't need an account for that. So the one thing that I would advise you is just don't bother signing up for the Magic Cafe. You know, at the end of the day, they, they haven't made it easy for you. So in return, tell them, stuff it. You still read the stuff. If you really want a, uh, if you really, really want a, to access the Magic Cafe, my advice would be go find a friend of yours that is a small business owner. Because most small business owners have their own domain name and have email addresses set up for that domain name, right? Um, 
and you can do one of two things. So you can say to them, do you have like a, a domain name that you don't use very often that you can use, that I can use for, um, that I can use to, uh, you know, just to create an account to get into this forum that I'm using. If you know that person well enough, they might be able to let you. So for example, with my company, um, the marketing department work across non-stop kids and slightly unusual. And most of the stuff that they do is set up with their marketing at nonstopkids.co.uk email address. Um, so so 99% of the stuff they do is through that email address. We have a marketing at slightly unusual.co.uk, but it's rarely used. So that's an example of having an email address. Or a lot of, uh, a lot of um, small business owners have the facility to be able to create a new email account. So they could just create a Shay at xyzinteriors.co.com, for example, and they could just set you an email account up. So what I would advise you to do is go find a friend that's got a small business and ask them if there's something that they can do to help you. Or you have to set up your own um, domain name and your own email address. And I don't think it's worth it to go into the Magic Cafe. Okay, so the next question is from Sting, and Sting says, "One more question: What's the hows and whys of the T? What, what, where is the hows and whys of the TUC video? Um, these hows and whys videos take a long time to put together. Uh, like they're normally an hour and a half long, and I go through everything with a fine tooth comb. The one that I'm currently working on at the moment is the hows and whys of the Wow." After the house, the whys of the wow, I'll be working on the TUC video. So there's a few that I'm working on at the moment, but I kind of do them over time because they take so long to do. Uh, I try to put one out every couple of months. So there's going to be another one coming soon. Okay, so the next question is Chris Douglas. And Chris asks, what is the Netrix? Well, as I said to everyone, the Netrix is launching on the 3rd of April. It is, think of the Netflix but for magic. So it's a, it's an online streaming platform designed specifically for magicians. You've got names like Adam Wilbur, Justin Miller, Daniel Chard, Dave Loosley, uh, Chris Congreve, Steve Della, the list goes on and on and on, Lloyd Barnes, some of the best names in magic. And they have tricks on there. It launches with 100 tricks. It also launches, it launches with a slight section with hundreds of slights. It also launches with uh, marketing advice, uh, advice on getting gigs, stuff like that, advice on theory. Uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff that it actually launches with. Uh, and then every fortnight we add new content. There's at least 10 new, uh, five new videos that go up every two weeks. So every two weeks, there's five new tricks that are uploaded onto Netflix, as well as uh, new slides and new marketing stuff and all new things going up there all the time. So we're constantly improving it. And there's a big community on there where people can chat to each other. It's a little bit like a Facebook group. Um, yeah, it's something I've been working on for the last two years. So what is the Netflix? It is the platform that I wish I had access to when I was first getting into magic. And hopefully it'll be a resource for everybody. Uh, and it's gonna be a way for the creators on the Netflix to share a whole bunch of really awesome magic. Wait till you see some of the stuff that Justin Miller's got on there. It will fry your mind. Okay, so the next question is from Adrian Suter. And Adrian says, what are some of the easy to learn tricks for a kid's show? I'm looking for something visual that works well in the intercultural context where everybody speaks a different language. Matt, okay. Um, uh, stratosphere would work really. You may, if everyone speaks a different language, you really want stuff that's super visual. Uh, and I don't know what your budget is for this, but stratosphere would be really good because you could do that without music. The egg bag would be really good because you can do that without uh, with music. So would some rope manipulation like fiber optics and things like that. You could do that to music. I'm thinking about stuff that's visual and funny that you could do to match uh, that you could do to music. So you don't need to speak. All of those are a perfect example of what you could use. Uh, I'm trying to think of something else. Uh, any sort of thread work, dancing handkerchief, stuff like that, billiard ball manipulation, sponge balls, anything like that where you're kind of manipulating stuff and stuff's appearing and stuff's happening, all of that would be good. Um, yeah, uh, you'd want to really go visual. You'd want to really go big and really visual because if everyone speaks a different language, you're not really going to be able to do much patter. You're not really going to do much presentation. And most of the routines I do in kids shows are based on patter. They're based on presentation. Uh, and when I've done videos on this channel talking about doing kids shows, that's the thing that I focused on. Um, patter and presentation but my advice would be to watch videos on people like Sylvester the Jester and look at the sort of stuff he does 
and 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 of course his act is very very visual and see how you can adapt that to your act if that kind of makes sense but uh, let me think about it it's a very interesting question let me think about it i'll get back to you on it on next week because it's the sort of thing that does need a lot of thought but there's a few ideas there to get you started okay so several people have uh, have left comments talking about chop and they want to know what the dealio is with chop and uh yeah let's talk about it so i didn't read that so as I said to you on the channel a little while ago, I went to Penguin, I went to Columbus, Ohio, 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 and I I filmed a whole bunch of stuff. I didn't know what was coming out first, uh, and apparently the first thing is chop. I love that Penguin, I talked about this on the Magic Podcast with Lloyd, I love that Penguin don't really ever like hype anything up. They just, it just comes out. I didn't even know it was coming out. It was like, I get contacted going, hey, Chops out. <laughs> They'd sent an email out and before I know it was on their site and that's amazing and that's awesome. I love the fact that they stand by their releases and uh, Chop is now officially available to buy from Penguin Magic. I will be doing videos on this in the coming weeks, uh, talking about it and breaking down routines and so on and so forth with it. But what is Chop? Well, Chop basically is uh, the new Chop, Chop 2.0 if you want, uh, is an extension of the chop that I bought out about 11 years ago. I bought out a thing called chop about 11 years ago. It's, um, uh, and it, it was a way of doing a chop cup routine with a borrowed coffee cup. So you borrow a coffee cup, uh, like a Starbucks cup or something like that, and you do a uh, routine using a borrowed cup and a borrowed bill. And um, it was a multi-phase routine and it finished with a bill and lemon. And everything was all wonderful about it and it was great and, and so on and so forth. A lot of people don't know about it because it's like 11 or 12 years old. And in this industry, what's old is new. And the guys at Penguin have always loved Chop. And they've said, have you got new work on it? And I'm like, guys, I have been working with Chop for the last 11 years. Just because it got released 11 years ago doesn't mean I ever stopped working on it. I have new moves, new concepts and new stuff I do with it. And they said, we'd love to bring it out again to a new audience. And I was like, you know what? That would be amazing because there's a lot of people that have never heard of Chop that don't know what it is. And I've got so many better ideas with it now than I had back in the day. And I also believe I'm a much better performer than I was back in the day. I look at my videos 11 years ago and I cringe, man. I really do. I, I think I was quite shit back then, <laughs> you know, looking back at it. And, you know, I, you read the reviews and, and, and of my stuff back then and they were like, oh, it's a great concept. But Craig does a lot of put and take magic. Uh, where it's like, OK, I'm going to put this here and I'm going to take this here. And I think they're right, you know, and as a performer that back then I only did kid shows and I did close up. And since then, I've, I've done stage shows. I've performed all over the world. And I think I've become better as a performer. And I also think I've become better as a teacher and a, an explainer of magic. Right. And I think that uh, Chop is too good to just fall into nothingness because it's it's something that I've continued to do all through my career and I've continued to work on it and new, come up with new concepts and new routines and new moves, new slights and so on and so forth. So what is Chop, the one that's coming out through Penguin Magic? Well, basically, the main routine is the impromptu uh, Chop Cup routine. So you can borrow a cup. And by the way, on the project, I talk about how you can use ceramic cups, cardboard cups, even glasses. I go through a couple of techniques where you can actually use a glass and actual glass, a borrowed highball glass, and you can do some killer stuff with a borrowed highball glass that looks absolutely incredible. But let's just say you're borrowing a, 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 a coffee cup from Starbucks or something, you can take that borrowed coffee cup and you can do tons of magic that you wouldn't be able to do with a normal chop cup. Because my problem with a normal chop cup, right, is you can always tell when somebody's using a chop cup, unless they do it really well, they bang it down on the table really hard. And that's how you know that someone's using a chop cup, because they go bump like that, right? Which is why a lot of people, when they're doing chop cup, they carry around a little close-up pad to put it on. The original idea with chop is I wanted to be able to do a chop cup without any extra cups. I didn't want to have to carry a cup around with me. I didn't want to carry anything. I just wanted to be able to borrow a cup and borrow a bill. And I wanted to be able to do this anytime, anywhere. And that's what it's all about. You borrow a cup, you borrow a bill. Now, on a side note, I've had people say to me, will this work with countries like the UK with polymer notes? And the answer is yes, I cover this on the project. It is very easy to prep a polymer note so that you can use it in chop. 
Um, and I'm not going to get into why I talk about it on the project, but it is very, very easy. But if you see me at a magic convention, I'll probably have chop on me. Um, I'll show you, <laughs> you know, absolutely not a problem. Polymer notes, not an issue. When you're in America and places like that, obviously not an issue. Um, but you borrow a bill, you have it signed, you pull it up into a ball, and uh, you put it down on the, uh, on the table, or you give it to the spectator, and then you are good. The balled up bill is your, is your ball, the borrowed coffee cup is your cup, and you can now go into a killer chop cup routine using techniques and sequences that you couldn't do in a normal chop cup. So, for example, you can cover it down on the spectator's hand and have it vanish off the spectator's hand and show that the cup's empty. The opening routine is a new slide. The opening sequence that I do is a new slide that's just killer. So you literally, you have the cup on the table and you can see this in the trailer. You, you have the cup on the table, you drop the bill inside. You then just pick up the cup and with no sleight of hand, you get them to wave the wand at the cup and then you turn it over and there's nothing there. You put it down on the table, you show there's nothing under there, you're very clean and then boom, it appears back underneath the cup. That first sequence is something I'm so proud of and it's a new slide that's been used in so many different ways in the new chop project. Um, but you can do anything. So, for example, and you see this again in the trailer, you can control the drop of a uh, of the of the ball, which you can't do with a normal chop cup. So you can put the chop cup onto the spectator's hand. You can show there's nothing there, and when somebody else says go, they will feel it land in their hand, even though there's no hand motion from you, and it's there. I mean, it's killer. You can drop it in and show it's gone completely. You can put it, uh, a cup over the uh, over the thing on the table and show it's gone. So many different ways. And then at the end, you produce a lemon. Uh, from underneath the cup in a very organic way. There's a complete vanish where your hands are empty of the uh, of the bill. And then when you cut it open, the, the lemon's examined, by the way. And then when you cut it open, the bill's inside. I mean, this is one of the strongest routines I've ever created. It's so good. Uh, but I talk about how you can do... One of the problems with the original shop is I never gave people ways of doing this without using a lemon. So you always have to, and it's sometimes not practical. If you're doing a corporate gig and you've got 12 tables to get round in two hours, you're not going to want to carry 12 lemons around with you. You're just not, right? Okay. You're just not. So I talk about how you can actually end this without doing the Bill and Lemon finale, where you can actually have a de So maybe you just do Bill and Lemon on the main table, the important table, and then everyone else, you do it with different ways. I talk about how you can actually borrow a ceramic coffee cup from them when they're sitting down at the table and do it with their cup. I talk about all of this. Uh, I talk about how you can do it with things other than bills, like paper and post-it notes and checks and receipts and things like that. I talk about all of this stuff. Um, on there in great detail, like I really break everything down for you. But the key thing is what you can actually use CHOP for outside of the CHOP routine and all new sequences. So I, I share one of my favorite coins across routines where you've got, you're using the CHOP gimmick with a borrowed coffee cup. And what's happening is it's in the spectator's hand. So you're taking this cup and you're putting it onto the spectator's hand. You're holding the four coins here. They see the four coins. Boom, they feel one coin drop in their hand and you show it's there and there's only three coins here. With no shells, just regular uh, regular coins. There is a gimmick, but it's not uh, a, a coin shell or a flip or anything like that. And then you do it again and then do it again and then you do it again. It's, it's it, it, you know, every single time they feel the coin land in their hand. It's so strong. Then there's the stuff you can do with mentalism. So you can have somebody think of a card, you can drop a folded up card into a... Um, into a cup and you can literally have somebody name a card, they take it out themselves and you've predicted the card. Imagine doing it with uh, star signs or imagine doing it with, uh, um, with ESP symbols. You literally just write something on a, on a, on a business card or on a folded up uh, blank playing card, drop it in, boom, done. You now have somebody name a star sign, no force. They tip it out themselves, you've predicted the star sign. Um, uh, there's applications with billet switching routines and things like that. And then there's my favorite routine with it, uh, which is with a, um, uh, it's a mystery box. This is how I actually use a lot of the time. And I've alluded to this on the channel before, but I didn't want to talk about it because obviously it was on the chop project, but now I can talk about it. The way that I close most of my card sets these days is instead of using a mystery box or a card to impossible location or a card to wallet, I use this. Because as long as I've got the chop gimmick with me, which looks really organic, I'm good to go anytime, anywhere. So I borrow a coffee cup, uh, any sort of cup, and I drop a card in there and they can see it in there. And I put it to one side so everybody can see it. And then I say, we're going to get back to that a little bit later on. 
I then have somebody pick a card and do whatever routine I want to do. And at the end, uh, when I finish the routine, I go back to get the coffee cup. I give the coffee cup to somebody. They tip the card out themselves. And when they tip the card out themselves and unfold it, it's their signed card. Instant reset, immediately, anytime, anywhere. For me, and again, this was alluded to on the trailer, this is as strong as the as the uh, chocolate. I could have probably released this as a standalone thing, as an impromptu mystery box, and and we could have just marketed it as that. And I think that people would have bought it when you see the full performance. Put it this way: when I did my Penguin Live, I actually used this handling in my Penguin Live at the end of a card under box routine. So I did the card under box routine, and I finished the card under box routine by having the card folded up, go into a cup that was all the way over the other side of the studio. And I, had, I went and got it, I gave it to somebody at fingertips and it was the folded up card in there. Like that alone, for me, is worth the price of the project. So I'm getting really excited because finally I can talk about it. I've been so excited about bringing this out. This is way more than the original chop. There's so much more you can do with it. And I cannot wait to see what people think about this because I, I just love it. And I will be doing live performances and so on and so forth. I review show specials on it over the coming weeks and months. But any questions you have about chop, please let me know. Okay, so the next question is from Sean McNulty, magician. Um... And he said he'd love to see his re uh, will to read visible in a magic live. I'm going to make that happen. I've already made it up. Dude, I said it last week. I'm going to say it again. It's one of the best ideas I've ever seen. I wish I'd have thought of that when I was, um, when I was, uh, when I was putting the visible project together. That's genius thinking there, dude. Um, and when this is out, it's on Mother's Day, but it's also my birthday. Can I get a happy birthday shout out? Absolutely. Sean McNulty, magician. Thank you so much for everything that you do on this channel. Thank you for coming up with amazingly awesome ideas that I am blatantly going to put into my act and take from you. Uh, thank you very much for continuing to contribute to the channel. Thank you for continuing to follow Magic TV. I really appreciate it. I really, really do. And um, happy birthday. And as a birthday uh, present, contact me and I will give you a coupon code that will give you one week free at Netrix when it launches. So that will be my birthday present to you. Uh, I'll give you a one-off, one-use coupon code that you can get a week free on the Netrix. Happy birthday to you, Sean. Uh, contact me at craig at magictv.org and we'll set that coupon code up for you. Okay, so the final question today is from Marcus J. And Marcus says, is this the best place to answer the question for next week? Been asking the same question since Blackpool never had a murmur of acknowledgement. Okay, very sorry. Uh, the question actually revolves around Craig's own release and a few things from friends. Dying for an answer. Adam Wilbur answered as much as he was able to, but I really need Craig's info. I'm sorry, Marcus. I really am. I haven't seen anything. Um, let me look at some of the previous Q&As quickly. I haven't... See, I don't know. Um, let me just have a look here and see if I can see some of the uh, old Q and A's. Marcus, 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 Marcus. I'm just looking here for you, buddy. Um, I don't see anything. Uh, I don't see anything on the previous Q and A. Look, I'm really sorry. I missed your. Uh, I missed your question. There are thousands of questions on this channel, and I do miss some from time to time. And for that, I can only apologise. Uh, as I'm as I'm talking, I am. Uh, trying to find what it is that you've asked. But here's the thing, if you, oh, hang on. Uh, uh, okay, there was a question for you on that. Okay, hang on, is this it? Nope, that's not it. Uh, trying to see if there's another, ah, here we go. Oh, hang on, this could be it. Okay, I've got it, okay, no panic. Marcus J, two weeks ago, where can I get my hands on crystallised Craig? Also, you recently mentioned at the Blackpool Magic Club that you saw a cups and balls routine performed using a ceramic coffee cups, beans, and the ending was uh, full of beans and coffee. Did you say this was by Adam Wilbur? And if so, any idea where he's releasing it? I'd love a good modern take on a classic. Um, if that's the question, great. If it's not, ask it again. I'll get to it next week. The answer is Crystallize was produced by PropDoc. It had a soft launch at Blackpool and a lot of people bought it at Blackpool and that's great. The rest of them are currently being shipped out to Murphy's. I don't have anything to do with that side of things, but I know that they're going to Murphy's and um, then PropDoc will be making more, but probably won't be available for six months. So the next time you're going to be able to buy it is from shops 
that uh, all good magic dealers, because it'll go on Murphy's and it'll be listed by all good magic dealers. I would buy it quickly because they are limited amounts because quite a few people got them at Blackpool. Um, and then once they're gone, they're going to be gone for about six months. Um, and then in answer to your coffee beans question, that is the one by Adam Wilbur by Volpine that I talked about earlier on in the, uh, the Q&A. Uh, and it's incredible. Now, hopefully that answers your questions. But if it doesn't, please answer them again. Ask it again below and I promise I'll answer it next week. So guys, there you go. That is another Q&A in the bag, as Ryan would say. Thank you once again for joining me right here on Magic TV. And thank you so much for all the amazing questions. Don't forget, if you want to see uh, more videos like this, you're going to like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below. And please ask as many questions as you can. Nothing is off the table. These Q&As live and die by the amount of questions that are asked and the quality of the questions that are asked. And I'm very lucky that the people who subscribe to Magic TV have some awesome questions. So one more time, thank you very much for joining me. I'm going to be back again later on today with a, uh, with a review show special at nine o'clock. And at six o'clock, I'm going to have a live. At two o'clock, I'm going to have a short. And then I'll be back on Monday with a five by five at nine. Guys, thank you once again. I hope you have an amazing weekend. Again, happy birthday to Sean. I'll see you again soon. My name's Craig from Magic TV. Mm -hmm.